The launch of Google's gaming platform, Stadia, has been mired in controversy. A lot of videos have come out criticizing the platform, but which criticisms are correct? Which are of the now ever so popular outrage culture? Let's examine, people. Hey, yo, it's your boy, MM2K, back again with another video. Hey, yo, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up because you know the deal. I'm not too proud to ask. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is the medicine, not quite soda medicine. I don't have my normal backdrops, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to show you something that pretty much amazed me. What you're looking at on the screen right now is you're looking at Destiny 2, the collection, which is exclusive to... to uh, the Stadia Platform Pro members, free of charge, all right? And I wanted to show you this playing from the Chrome browser. That's what you're looking at, folks. But we're going to talk a little bit more about that. Let's talk about this whole Stadia launch thing and how it's caused so much controversy and so much discussion. And at the end of the day, I love it. I'm going to explain to you why I love it, too, when we get to the end of this video. But I love it, okay? And we need more of this. But I want to separate... The truth from the falsehoods, because you know, we got a lot of people that want clicks. They're thirsty for clicks out here, all right? So we're going to push them to the side, and we're going to let the truth prevail. But you know how I do it, all right? And my so what, somewhat, <laughs> the medicine, I break it up into three parts. First, we look at the whole issue, and then we give you the checkup, all right? And then I hit you with the analysis. And then I drop you with the prescription to fix the whole matter, okay? So let's get into it. First, the checkup. All right, as we all know, Google's game platform Stadia has had some rough moments even leading up to the launch, even before the launch, really, okay? They held that infamous AMA that didn't go over well, but even before that, features that were heavily spoke about were not available at launch. All in all, it appears that Google Stadia right now at the time of this recording is simply a beta that requires paid for access, okay? Now on to the analysis. Now, with that said, a lot of people have had criticisms that go beyond just that. They said, first off, that the lineup is weak. Therefore, it fails in comparison to rival services like xCloud. They said that the performance is spotty and it's broken. And lastly, they said that the price model is just plain horrible. You know? All right. So, let's look at all that. Okay. Let's, let's examine all that and let me now drop the prescription. Okay. First, the lineup is weak. Therefore, it fails in comparison to its rival service, xCloud. Now, originally when Stadia was revealed, people believed that it would work like a subscription service similar to Game Pass, all right? That's what we all thought. I was in that belief system as well. You know what I'm saying? And I think Xbox was also in that release system, in that belief system, sorry. <laughs> With that being the case, a nervous Xbox then release news talking points and did like I believe, I, if my memory isn't failing me, did a video about it too. Not really saying anything more about xCloud, but just letting people know that, hey, we want to operate in this space too, okay? However, at release, the Stadia subscription model only included access to its top tier gaming service, the Pro, which gives you access up to 4K60, right? And it gives you discounts on games, okay? You still have to pay pretty much full price to get unless you have those pro deals, all right? That said, though, I want y'all to consider this. It has been reported that Project X Cloud will be in beta for years, okay? You don't believe me? Go check out Podcast Unlocked that aired around, I believe, November 20th or November 22nd. It, it's their post XO 2019 show where they discuss the likes and dislikes of on what happened at XO 2019. And in it, Ryan McCaffrey talks about a lot of the interviews and discussions that were held around that time, one in which included Phil Spencer talking about how Project X Cloud is going to be in beta for years. Okay? Now, during the launch of this beta, it's only rolled out to Game Pass subscribers and Xbox Live subscribers, to our knowledge, right? I don't know anybody that's void of those services that's been given invitations to this uh, beta, right? So, and also with that though, also to be fair, also with that, the game does, I mean, the service does come with 50 games, but the real deal holy foot about the situation is that all 50 games 
don't work properly and they're not all stable with the service across all of its supported platforms. All right. Some are only stable bearably, you know, or perform okay when connected to good Wi Fi. Few are stable across the board, whether it's Wi Fi or 4G. And that's only, you know, when I say stable for xCloud, I mean it has like, you know, noticeable input lag that hampers your, your playing, but it isn't horrible. You know what I'm saying? And that's only been reported from a lot of our knowledge on top end devices like Samsung Galaxy uh, 10s and S9s. You know what I'm saying? I've been testing the system out and I can tell you, in world in real world play testing on platforms that other services like Nvidia and Shadow work well on, they heavily outperform XCloud. All their games work there, all their games look good, and they perform and they're stable, not XCloud. So you got that. However, on Stadia on all of its supported platforms right now, they play smooth and all their games act that way. So when you look at the terms better here in this, in this question, better is subjective. So therefore I ask you, all of you that are listening, do you simply want to interact with a bunch of titles on your phone, regardless of performance, because you don't have to pay for each said title or do you want smooth, viable gameplay on all of the supportive um, platforms? Me personally, I perform the latter. I prefer the latter. You know what I'm saying? And what I, I say that to say this. Xbox, we got to get you into a space to where if you're going to release something, it works. Stop it with the excuses. Stop it with the half acidness. Okay, you know what I'm saying? I get the Stadia's launching. We're going to talk about that. Has some problems. But at least in the performance area, it's stable. Can I get that from the richest company in the world? Can I, please? All right. That's it. Let's go on to the next item. People saying that the performance is spotty and it's broken. As I just showed you. In my video, and I'll drop a link to the to the to this actual video down below, just in case my recording doesn't do it justice. That the input response is like spot on, definitely with a controller. Definitely spot on, okay? And I'm playing Destiny 2 Collection again, which is exclusively free to Stadia Pro members. And I'm playing this again for my Chrome browser. It's a it's performing astoundingly close to a lock 60 frames per second. Now, since receiving my unit, I've had nothing but smooth gameplay. Okay? And I'm not the only one. I'm not the only one that's trying to tell you some truth, opposed to a lot of the bull crap lies that are out there. Here goes somebody else trying to do so. Now, this guy's funny, you know what I'm saying? He likes to troll a lot of people, but he's doing what we call the Lord's work out here in the name of Stadia. And he made a video. Y'all should go see this, man. Y'all need to go look at this video. I can't show it here because it has some YouTube footage. And I don't want this video getting flagged because of it. But it's a, it's a funny guy at Stadia Works. You know what I'm saying? Now, a lot of what he has in this video is inspired by my homeboy Griffin Gaming. Griffin Gaming got a video. You know what I'm saying? Let me see if I can. It, um, he got a video right here that. Okay, y'all can see that now. My homeboy Griffin Gaming, that he says Google Stadia is a cool idea with a terrible launch. You know what I'm saying? And he he brings up some points that I may not necessarily all agree with, but I can respect because he's played the platform and they do make sense. I just have a different approach to address some of the issues that were dealt with at launch. Okay. But that said, again, smooth gameplay out of this world from a chrome browser you can't beat it it's stable on everything that they're going to support so if they say that they support it at least you know that you're getting good you're getting a good experience across the board ain't no oh i could play some of this but i can't play some of that ain't none of that ain't none of that okay i've experienced none of it a lot of people have an experience and for those that are out there with the idiot hurt the outrage culture they're saying otherwise they haven't tested their their, their network platform you know what I'm saying? Some people admit it. Oh, our network, our, our network is cl is cluttered, cluttered. 
Well, if your network is cluttered, then you can't do um, uh, game streaming, period. Duh. That said, folks, lastly, people who say that they think that the price model is horrible. Now, I do believe that there are some issues, okay? And I also want to show you this, all right? So I've talked about these issues, you know what I mean? First and foremost, I, I sent out this big manifesto of a tweet where I talked about everything from, you know, dropping the price on some more games to um, getting a more diverse la uh, lineup even at launch to who they're partnering with for, to, for this push for uh, Google phones, all that good stuff. I talked about all that, you know what I'm saying? However, there's a lot of people that are doing some over-exaggeration, but they're mixing it in with some good points. And they're doing that for clicks, but they're cluttering their good points. Case in hand. Let me go back here. Go back one more time. All right. Your homeboy, Tom Warren. I forgot what publication he's with, but he got the blue check mark. You know, Tom Warren is, the, is a well-known guy. And he says the stadium was dead because he was trying to get into a multiplayer match for 10 minutes and it, it, it just bombed him out. And that is true. If you try to play multiplayer, that's what's going to happen. I did not. I, when I woke up and saw that this morning, I said, Tom is full of it. And I tried it myself because I haven't tried multiplayer. Keep that in mind. And I said, oh, he's right. You know what I'm saying? And I was confused because when you go to my gameplay, you know what I'm saying? Like you saw earlier in my gameplay, I was you know, encountering a lot of people. I encounter a lot of people. Like when I do a um, public event, there's people coming from everywhere. And I'm like, what the hell? Like more people than I normally see on any other platform. You know what I'm saying? So I say that to say this, that the people that have Google Stadia this early in the game, while it's quote unquote a paid beta, they're not trying to jump into multiplayer. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to test out the, the, the game and the gameplay and the performance all in like the campaign modes and, and some of the strikes. The strikes I really didn't have a problem getting into, right? That being said, Tom's point that he's making here that I think he said it's a dead system. He's saying, he, I think he said the issue is not Destiny servers addressing someone. It's an issue to fact that nobody's using Stadia. That's, a, that's, a, that, that's wrong. That's a lie, Tom. But you brought up a good point. Like this isn't good that something this smooth has nobody in the multiplayer. That everybody's pushed to wanting to test out the campaign, right? And with that being said, let's separate all your bloviating from some, a good point that you brought up, Tom, that it isn't good. So what Stadia needs to do is they need to hurry up, get these buddy codes out there. But beyond that, they need to work on a way that during the Christmas season, that they allow people to just play on their web browser, whether they've gotten a buddy pass or not, maybe a hundred thousand people and allow them just access to destiny so they can play the multiplayer, maybe just access to destiny multiplayer to test out the system. Okay. I think a lot of people are hesitant because they don't want to mess up rankings or however the multiplayer works in destiny all like that. You know what I'm saying? And they don't want to mess it up because they're not sure how it's going to perform, but it, but it works. It works. So def de definitely Stadia has to do more to do outreach in that regard. That being said, you know what I'm saying? Again, is the launch perfect? No, it's not perfect. But we got to separate the over-exaggerations and the lies from what's really going on out there. It's not perfect. It's not a perfect launch. But due to their goal, they have plenty of time to make it up. Do not listen to the naysayers, okay? Let's not fall victim to the idiot hurt wing of the outrage culture. Let's stay informed, okay? And hopefully this video has done a lot to help you do just that. And with that said, that's it from your boy MM2K. Hey, yo, let me know what you think, what I had to say about this in the comment section below. Because like always, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, you can check me out on links below to follow me. Hey, yo. Check me out with the PNTS Network. Check me out with the Broadband Bullies. Check me out on the Hard Knock Digital Culture. All the links to that are below. Because we are about doing the truth here. We're not about clickbaiting. And I said, you guys, whether you got an Xbox, PlayStation, or even Stadia, PC2, y'all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. 
I should I should throw switch in there too. Peace.